Bueno, podemos empezar. Can we start? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good day to all of you. I am Patricia. I think we know each other since we are meeting each other according, uh, from one meeting to the next. It's wonderful for all the uh, work that you're sending us and with the uh, you're doing your work, homework wonderfully. We're going to start this third meeting on this course on communication. You probably remember that on our last meeting we spoke about these social networks. Today we're going to speak about something different because I had the impression that we probably had left behind something important. Today we have a very important uh, topic, particularly for you who are involved in justice and peace, which is the uh, theme of technology, communication and communication for uh, development. So I have two, um, two of our speakers, Viviana Brun and Eduardo Mattei, which you will have an opportunity to meet shortly. Thank you for your participation. They both are very competent. Uh, Eduardo has written a text on the presence of the church in the digital world, so we can take advantage of their presence, of the presence of both uh, speakers. I would like to, as I have already done for the previous sessions, uh, how are we going to organize our agenda? I wanted to start by sharing the uh, experience of uh, the situation of uh, coronavirus, which is confronting us with very um, interesting challenges. And thanks to the UISG, thanks to technology, we can continue working. At, at home, although we are unable to cover all of our activities, but the greatest majority. There is a strong debate and a strong dialogue between the staff members since um, some want to cancel all of the events, uh, others want to cancel only a few of them. It's a very difficult decision to be made in this uh, point in time. However, we believe that technology can be a support. They can help us to feed and to promote and enhance the solidarity relationships. And we therefore believe that we are trying to preserve some of our formation activities so that uh, who has to remain at home or remain isolated doesn't feel completely abandoned. And this is why we can take the good side of technology. At the same time, we have so many news uh, overflowing us. I think there is maybe an excess of news. Uh, we are a bit overwhelmed. So I think it's the moment also to try to strike a balance and to learn um, how to keep a certain uh, balance because um, news can also offset our imbalance. And so we have to try to remain instead uh, calm and uh, under control. So how are we going to start? Let's start first of all with a short uh, video from the Pope. It has been launched by the Pope in uh, last, uh, let's say, for the, the meeting in May. We're going to speak about the social networks and we're going to also um, basically use two of your examples, one in Spanish and one in English, and then we're going to give the floor to Viviana Brun. She's going to help us uh, to understand what does it mean when we speak about ICT technology, ICT for development. We have uh, then a question uh, and answer session. Of course, we can, particularly in the Spanish group, they can ask questions uh, directly if you want, or you can use the chat. You can use uh, the um, USG's chat. We are going to also give some time to Eduardo to help us to uh, reflect on the ethical um, dimension and the ethical aspects. And we're going to connect that with what happened, what occurred at the end of February, because the Pontifical Academy 
her life in the Vatican has uh, organized a meeting uh, on artificial intelligence on, at the service of humanity, particularly in the field of health. And then a document is available. I think it is currently available only in English, but you can download from the web page on the Pontifical Academy of Life. It's a very interesting document. I have spoken a lot. I just want to know if you have any comments. Don't forget that you can always write because I know that since we are many, it's not easy to, uh, to talk um, all together. However, maybe we can start with a short video. We can use that more as a prayer. And um, it's gonna be a prayer so maybe we are become let's have a look at this uh, laudato si link uh, dot org it's uh, mainly it's um de dedicated to the uh, week in may which uh, will be devoted to the laudato si because uh, this may 2020, it will be the fifth anniversary since its uh, publication. So it's truly a challenge because the Pope is, is uh, telling us very challenging words. The kind of world that we want to leave to those who are behind us. You can read the text because it's in English. Motivated by the question, I'd like you to invite you to participate in the Laudato Si Week, 16th to the 24th of May, 2020. It's a global campaign on the occasion of the fifth anniversary of the encyclical letter, Laudato Si. On the care of our common home, I renew my urgent call to respond to the ecological crisis, the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor cannot continue. Let's take care of our creation, a gift of our God, good God. Let's celebrate together, Laudato Si Week. May God bless you and do not forget to pray for me. What kind of world do we want to leave to those who will follow us, to the children who are growing? This encyclical for those who work in the digital world, is just like a Bible, it's like a, it's a guide for us. I want to open up a short uh, side, aside, before starting reflecting on social networks. It's very interesting to notice how does the Vatican uh, uh, work in communication. When they have an event, organize an event or a campaign, first thing is to prepare and to open a, a web page. So we do already have a couple of uh, web pages, institutional web pages uh, on Laudato Si. There's one from the uh, Dicastery for the Integral Human Development. So for each event, the Vatican immediately creates a dedicated web page. You notice here, you even have the, um, the sign on, the name, so you can know exactly because in the uh, a great amount of data, the clarity of communication is very helpful because it gives us a certain order. So the web page, then the social networks, of course, which are always connected, using the same graphics, the same colors, so that to avoid confusion. And what else? A little spot. This is the Pope, but imagine 
a congregation or a campaign a little video a video clip a video clip is uh, something which uh, animates which uh, somehow uh, encourages so in looking at what the vatican does we can learn and this can be done also for the any kind of meeting on economy education everything which have been unfortunately postponed I read the comments and I thank you very much for what you are writing. I believe that social networks can certainly help us in this kind of moment to develop further our creativity so that this digital space can help us to convey information and support. For instance, I see not only in schools, but also parishes. Parishes are organizing themselves to do online meetings, events, Parish, even a parish priest is pre preparing short video clips for the community not to feel abandoned and isolated. So we have a, a wide uh, range of uh, possibilities that we should tap and we should try to use. Now let's look into the task that we've been uh, receiving. I thank you very much for those who answered. I think some of you have a, a very clear way of analyzing your profiles we the task was had to do with your personal profile the institutional profile is different of course but here i have added some of the questions which could be of some help to you and this is not only for today but also for our future activities now in our profile in the last post is there mo more content which has been shared or which has been personally produced produced by you is there a great variety between your posts or only texts or links to a web page which in facebook is not really um, working properly my post do they enhance dialogue or are they more statements simple statements for instance, Facebook. Facebook is not like a web page. If what you what you publish uh, on in Facebook doesn't uh, truly encourage a dialogue, so the, it's not really a social network. It's simply it's like, simply like a window case. It's a window. It's a page. It's a Facebook page, but it's a page. Other questions. So if we take the audience point of view, so the audience is somehow your friends, your groups of group of friends. Which are the posts which are more appreciated by my friends, audiences in terms of numbers of likes, of interaction, of answers, comments? What are the posts which produce greater interaction? Just to give you an example of the US, she is very interesting. We normally have very sort of high quality information. When I, if I put a photo of the uh, team, UIS Guy team with uh, the birthday, you know, the 80th birthday of our president, and the echo is extraordinary. Not only because everybody likes her very much, which is true, but also because I think that people, the audience like life, like daily life, something which affects more the emotional part, life. This at least is my interpretation, but you might have a different interpretation. A third question, which always refers to the audience. Are there friends, faithful friends, answering more frequently? Do I have more faithful followers? Of course, it depends very much on the algorithm. And in Facebook, we can also choose. We can choose the friends, who, friends whose posts we want to see. But this is uh, it's the algorithm. So these questions 
that I'm going to send you help me not only to analyze my personal profile, but also the institutional profile, for example, of the constitution, of the congregation. I'm sorry, you might have different pages. So it's, uh, you can use the same questions to analyze both. Having said that, I would like to show you. This is uh, Sister Cecilia. She has analyzed her work in Facebook. So we're going to also have a look at her profile. This is what she's writing. It's very interesting to listen carefully because what she has written is shows that she probably has truly processed what she has planned. It's not just a coincidence. I wanted to show my moments of personal joy and shared with people I love and cherish, although they are not close to me, but I can enjoy their presence just as the support that I can provide to others in sharing publications, which I feel deserve to be seen by many more people. For example, choosing a lifestyle and or uh, supporting and sponsoring a project, a charity project uh, for the needy. So the main message is a joy of living. So her, her own style, you might not necessarily an, appreciate that. But it's important to have some kind of a guideline that we use in following and in reading comments. She analyzes that in her profile there is a certain variety, at least in the last five publications. Why did I say five last? Because people doesn't go uh, doesn't go and read more in the past because these networks are the networks of present time, not of historical events. She authorized me to open up her profile. There you have a look. It's interesting. You see, in this little image, this is where we normally put a logo. She instead puts a photo, very nice photo. For example, I would put her image, why? So that she could be recognized because if I'm in Facebook and nobody recognizes me, it doesn't make sense. This is at least my perception. Of course, if this were a page, I would also have a logo, the logo of my congregation, organization, or NGO, whatever. I think it's very important to have the same image in all of the networks so that we can easily be recognized. And in the banner, in the heading, I know Monica, she's the Superior General. And I assume that she is Cecilia. Cecilia, are, are you connected? Where are you? I don't know if she is connected. There you are, Cecilia. So here you have your superior general. Her name is clear. Let's have a look at the posts. It confirms this is her face. Here you even have her email, her personal email. This is a simply a quote. This is a nice comment. And this is the photo with her superior general. The quality of the photo is not very clear. Other photos. some other image of the congregation. Uh, 
her analysis is based on five elements, which not necessarily are these uh, images. But when we look at the profile of our social networks, we understand that we are somehow also uh, passing on a digital identity, a message. This morning we were listening to someone who works in Facebook for the company and saying, what kind of narrative uh, appears from our webpage, we as an organization? I think that is a, this is an important question that we should all ask. Do you have any questions? You can always uh, write them or I noted that the Spanish one is writing more, the English one is different. Also the difference between the two, the approach towards communication is also nice because it reflects your culture. I see the difference. I'm going to read some of the comments. I generally share with a, a very selective group. Um, and I, it's, I struggle to share everything. This is something different. On the one hand is to do, have a selection. Who is going to read and, 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 and the contents is different. It's a different issue. I share only by basically uh, transmitting videos. I don't really agree this very much. I invite you to reflect. How do we be practical in the context of justice and peace? I do not understand the question, sorry. How do we be practical in the context of, I don't know if Ashid, if you can, Reformulate the question, it's not clear to me. I'm sorry, my English is not so good. I'm sorry. Okay. Suficiente, bueno, bueno. So let's continue. Let's move on. The second example that I have received, which is not an analysis, something simple, but I find it very nice. These are the Marist sisters, I believe. They have basically used their name to send, to convey six messages in terms of communication. This is the style of communication of the Marist sisters. I'm gonna read this in English to translate that. Difference. Does my message achieve something? Is it necessary? Ha, pause. Take time to rethink what you are about to say or to read your message carefully before posting or sending. This is digital ecology. Three. Respect is key. Is my message respectful? Inviting is the language, tone and word choice, right? Is the language, tone and word choice, right? Sisterly. Are my words kind? How would I feel on receiving this message? Very good question. Truth and honesty. Are they a hallmark of all my communications? So the Franciscan have something very similar as Marist. Yeah, this is a very good question, Kathy. We have to be, 
do you remember when I showed to you, I don't know if it was the second meeting, perhaps the schema, the monthly or weekly schema to plan my post. If I do that, it's very easy for me to take control, to take over what I'm going to, uh, to share. So it's good to have our own content, is good to have uh, a variety. So for instance, if I plan to have three posts per week, it's important to have a video, photos, and text. But you know, with the, the, a variety within the, the planification. That's why it's important to analyze what I usually publish because if it's always the same, it doesn't work. So it's good also to share some UN campaign, but it's good perhaps to add a personal message. What are you inviting people for? Because your audience is your audience. I don't know if, you, if I'm clear. Okay, I cannot take much time, so I want to go briefly to recuperate something from the, uh, from the social network, Spanish. We do need, so if we go back to the theme of social networks, we do need a, a couple of elements to reflect. We do need to have a communication plan, which uh, is also for personal profiles and, uh, uh, of course, namely for the institutional profiles, but particularly for the personal ones, because there's nothing which is only and exclusively personal. What we do, number two, what we do in the networks contributes in creating our digital identity linked with reputation and visibility. So in this very much specific moment, the visibility is what is truly give me um, reputation. It's not, not what I like or not what it is like, but this truly helps me to create and develop and build trust. The church is living a, a lack of trust, a, a true lack of, tr of trust. Number three, Conversations in the network do create a culture and they also affect the uh, decision making. Culture is not done in schools, in the squares, on the streets, but on the networks. And we working in the field of justice and peace, we have to change the culture if we want to change the world and we can do that in the digital world. I would like to share here four frequent consequences uh, in uh, social networks. First of all, the filter bubbles. The uh, triceratops effect. The so-called dining room effect. and the echo chamber. We'll have a look at the four ones. Waiting while Viviana is getting ready. Maybe Eduardo can also tell us something more. Facebook allows us to see and to better understand behind the wall of our profile, particularly people who are share our still same mindset. So we tend to develop a form of a bubble. So what I said is fine. So we necessarily are used to certain comments and this is not good because we need to be exposed particularly to the difference. 
the uh, triceratops. I think you are familiar with this photo. This is a photo that probably was published some years ago. Unfortunately, I can't remember his name. Ah, uh, Steven Spielberg, yes, the famous director. He was uh, filming Jurassic Park. This is a, uh, it's a fake, no? Fake photo. So it's a, it's a complete makeup. It's um, but if you read in the chat, people didn't even necessarily some people were saying it's a fake it's a fake it's a plastic uh, it doesn't exist I, he didn't i didn't kill that animal but the comments the comments i said i don't care if it's steven bielger or whatever what he doesn't have to do is to shoot an animal and take a photo after having that so what is the triceratops effect is that uh, um, regardless re, uh, truth it's the idea it's the idea that i have about that although it's not true although it is untrue so a fake comment basically kept uh, like like a in a waterfall kept kept uh, continuing you know i don't know if it's uh, if it's, it's clear enough sometimes others we can even insist it's not true this is a joke this is a it's, it's true that it's simply a fake but he somehow uh, the people say that he um, killed the animal so we cannot be on uh, social networks as if we were in a kitchen talking to your hu husband wife or son it's a different level of intimacy of privacy because in my dining room i'm in my private space the social networks are not private what i put what i publish uh, escapes my control and i notice that there are sisters religious men and women publishing things which go beyond the level of intimacy of privacy And the other, the other is the echo, the echo chamber, because we end up by creating a, a viral, but with something which is completely void, completely without a content. So this is the role of religious life. It, in this uh, respect is very important. What do we want to communicate? So maybe we have to be more critical. We have to be more attentive. going to read uh, some of the comments Eduardo probably and Vivian, Viviana you can read the uh, comments in the English page uh, maybe you can also help us to reflect uh, Viviana which one in particular um, so she's a lay person and she works with an NGO The name of the NGO is ONG 2.0. She's been the first in Italy speaking about ICT for development, which means technology, the technology of communication and information at the service of development, very concrete experiences to foster and to promote development in poor countries thanks to uh, new technologies. You can speak, the floor is yours, Viviana. Okay, thank you so much for the invite. I'm really happy to be here today. I saw that there are many people connecting from many different places of the world. So it's a pleasure for me to be here. 
I'm gonna share my screen so you will be able to see and to follow live presentation. Okay, um, I'm quite confident that you are seeing my screen. So uh, just check the chat. Okay. Um, Diana, don't worry about the chat. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so as Patricia said, um, we are going to talk about ICT for development. And so we are go a little bit, um, we wide a little bit the floor starting from the social network that is part of the ICT, of course, but if we go to many other kinds of technology and we are going to see how they can be applied and how they can support the social and economical developments um, all over the world. So, uh, your level of knowledge about ICD, so, so maybe you are super experienced and so what I'm going to say is nothing new, but I'm going to be super brief on this point just to be sure that we are all aligned and sure that we are, we all know what ICD for this stands for. So I start with ICD, as Patricia mentioned, is information and communication technology. That means really a variety of tools from connectivity um, to hardware, software, application services, networks. And so everything that is allowing us to uh, process, to share, to transmit, to receive data information, and also to organize communication flows. So this is ICT, some examples. So we start, we can move from really traditional kind of technology that we all are quite familiar with. So like telephone, TV and radio. And some of these are really important even now in many different countries of the world, uh, if you think especially to radios. And then we go to mobile devices that are now really spreading everywhere. And connectivity, of course, we are gonna see that is a really relevant aspect Okay, but also drones uh, are part of the ICTs because they, are, um, they have some software and they can collect information, for example, about um, a specific landscape or collect information during emergency and um, make us aware of what is going on in a specific area of the world in a specific moment. Um, that there we have, of course, computer, Internet of Things, satellites, smartphone application, and digital data collection, all the tools and software that are allowing us to collect in data. This is just a general overview. We are not going through all the different technologies, but it's just to understand that it's a really wide um, area, so that there are really many different options that we can use and that we can integrate in, for example, I'm working for an NGO and I normally do consultancies for NGOs. So in, in the cooperation for development sector, just to know that we can integrate, we have really a big variety of tools uh, that we can use uh, for our projects. So um, why we are talking about ICT related to the development sector? It just is not just because it's a kind of fancy thing and just because this technology is a kind of modern thing, but it's just because, but it's really because it's, the, it's changing the world. And now we are, for example, here you can find some data about the internet world penetration rate. And we can see that um, the world average is around 60%. So internet is becoming spreading almost all around the world. We are gonna see that we still have some barriers, but uh, it's, a, it's a big opportunity that we, we can use in different way. Okay, I will try to slow down a little bit because I was realizing that for the translator, it's gonna be quite challenging otherwise. So, um, the, the international community that is working around the development sector, uh, especially for the social point of view, 
um, realized during the, for example, during the Agenda uh, 2030 that um, ICTs uh, as can have really a great potential. So is we, we are discussing about this topic since many years, but I would say that in the last five, uh, seven years that um, this topic is becoming more um, present also in official documents. So the ex-secretary of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, really mentioned the ICT as key instrument for social development, mentioning many, many different um, sectors of application, for example, like um, health sector, education uh, for gender empowering and agriculture. For so what we are going to see now together and what I prefer uh, for you today is just a general overview with some examples on how we can apply these technologies in different sectors. So uh, the sectors we are going to see together, there are many. Uh, I, I choose like five different examples. The first one is the agricultural sector. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some opportunity of using ICTs in, uh, for education. And then the health sector, of course, and the, uh, democracy and human rights. And then we're going to finish with uh, financial inclusion that is really changing, it's, it's having a really big impact. Our um, ICTs are having a really big impact in many different countries, especially in Africa, in terms of uh, financial inclusion. Okay, so um, let's start with um, agriculture. Agriculture was one of the sector where the ICT uh, starting to have a, a visible impact uh, I would say sooner in the development sector. So um, for example, uh, in agriculture, they can for sure work on, uh, be used for kind of educational purposes. So just spreading information about, for example, agricultural technique um, to farmers all around the country, they are really useful in in making farmers more aware, for example, related to uh, weather information, uh, what is the, um, especially now with climate change, that's what was like the traditional knowledge about the weather, about the seasons is really changing. Um, farmers need to rely on data that are up to date. So especially information, um, this is like SMS services, are really used and spread in um, rural area um, around Africa. I will, I'm going to talk a lot about Africa just because my professional experience is all focused on, uh, on African country. So I work in many African French speaking and English speaking countries. Uh, so I'm so sorry for people that are more for uh, Asia or South America. Um, it's, it's really my fault that I cannot really cover uh, their country with some examples. But there are similar technology also in, uh, in other continents. And it's also really useful, the use of ICTs, for example, the, uh, of SMS for uh, having access to price information. Um, and this is really uh, crucial for farmers um, because uh, when you're living in a rural area, you're not aware uh, what are the up-to-date price of the market. So it's really common and really easy for buyers just to come to propose you a price and you accept because you're, you're scared about losing the possibility of selling your product. And, and so uh, sometimes you are really losing a lot of money. And so people that has no access to information are normally paying a price for that. And so it's uh, somehow also a way for spreading democracy and access to, to right information. And what else? Well, you can also really connect buyers and, farmer, and farmers. And, and this is a big advantage because you can, if the buyers know that there are a specific quantity 
uh, goods in a specific area, they can move. And also farmers, they can connect together if they know what are the needs from the buyers. For example, if the buyer needs, um, I don't know, 50 tons of a specific vegetables, farms have to be together and be ready to deliver these specific amounts of, of vegetables. So it's, um, it's, it's really um, supporting the development of agriculture, both from the level of production and the quality, but also it's really helping to um, farmers to, to have a, a better relationship with the market and also with uh, revenues for sure. Um, I had it here, two different examples. There are really many. This one is a, is a, is a system that is called M-Farm. And as you can see from this, uh, this picture, it's really connecting farmers to the market. And it's also um, helping, uh, for example, in terms of transparency of prices, but also, as I was mentioned before, in connecting farmers with the, the, with the buyer and with the markets, and also with traceability and product availability. So in order to be able to sell all the product that we have uh, with a good price, of course. And then we have another, just another service that is called uh, uh, iShamba. This is a service that farmers can just subscribe to. Uh, there is um, uh, a version for free uh, and, and a, a kind of subscription that is offering different services, but also the, the free version is really good because it's a, it's a SMS plus a call center service. So the call center is, um, is a service that farmer can just call and have information about everything. Uh, for example, vegetables disease, diseases and weather conditions and everything, uh, market prices. But there are also this uh, kind of uh, SMS alert system that is delivering uh, important information to, to farmers via SMS. So it's, um, there are two uh, nice uh, services that are working since many years. They already have uh, a really strong background, so they already show that they're working really fast and they are really spreading in Africa, uh, both especially in East Africa, but we have similar services also in uh, in West Africa. And there is another. Um, uh, I, I had it a video so you can see it with uh, with Cal even after the the webinar. There is another service that is uh, in this case is uh, from Kenya. It's called Kilimo Salamo. And this is an insurance service. And I really like this, um, this example because it's kind of smart approach to, uh, to the use of ICT to agriculture because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's working again uh, for supporting uh, food, food, uh, food security especially. So um, this system is basically uh, insurance that is related to seeds. So when a farmer is, uh, is buying uh, seeds for, um, for just for the cultivation, is, uh, is receiving um, an insurance that he can just um, activate the SMS. This insurance is going to cover the, the farmers in case of bad weather condition or a specific disease that is spreading in this area. So um, the fact that this, far this farmer has um, insurance on the seeds and uh, there is the services that is providing him with information that is certifying that this uh, weather, uh, bad weather condition was real, is, is, is uh, pushing farmer to invest more money uh, in, uh, in buying good quality seeds. So because before they were just, I don't know, kind of panicking in spend a lot of money for high quality seeds because there were um, many people were scared that then if the crops were uh, damaged by, for example, bad weather, they would just lose all the, the money. In this case, the insurance to the seeds and creating this connection between the seed seller and the farmer is, uh, is making farmers more confident and so to to try different and 
um, improve quality um, agricultural system. And there is another aspect that is, uh, I'm really working on it in this, uh, in this moment, and I'm working with ICT for Education, especially in, in Italy now, uh, because you, you all know about the coronavirus and that all the schools are closed. And so ICT can really support as we are support and as they are supporting now um, us to uh, now just to be together and to share information and to be in touch the same approach we can have during uh, with schools it's just to to a matter of um, combine um, education methodology with the, the proper ICT tool in this case, um, just talking about ICT for education, I found really interesting also the idea that ICT can have teachers from different areas, from urban and rural area, to get a kind of a common ground in terms of, of knowledge and up-to-date information. Because in many countries, and I had experience in Asia, in Vietnam, the level of um, of, um, of education and schools is really high in, uh, in is good and is high in, in the city, but in the rural area, there is a really huge difference, a really a huge gap uh, in terms of really um, of the preparation of the of teachers uh, because they just got the, the, their degree and they start teaching, but then it's really hard to uh, deliver to them. Uh, trainings in order to be up to date. So um, ICT is really useful in this case, and is in other contexts is really is also useful in supporting students. And when I'm um, here, you can read I wrote ICT allow learning to become student centered rather than teacher dominated. I mentioned some specific methodology that were developed around the use of ICT. For example, the flipped uh, classroom. So the idea that there is some a part of the of the education is is managed independently by the students and and the school time the time that we are spending together is more for discussing what you already uh, have studied in, alone at home for example independently and then there is a big role of ICT during emergency as what we are experiencing now. But what I'm trying to, uh, to tell to people every day now is to be really confident because in other areas of the world, they already experience an epidemic um, uh, situation like with Ebola in, uh, in um, West Africa, for example. And in this case, um, it, in Italy, we are using a special connectivity in, during this day. So like uh, online meeting, um, video conference uh, and also opportunity for video sharing. Uh, in, in Sierra Leone, for example, they use our radio. So they create, uh, the schools were closed there as well, almost for one year during the Ebola epidemic. And uh, in this case, they were delivering um, content and trainings uh, to, to students that were home just through uh, creating some educational radio bro uh, broadcasts. So as you can see, there are uh, children doing homework uh, nearby the radio. This was a really big project. Um, it, it was UNICEF was involved in this project. And it was quite effective in order to keep uh, children busy and doing things and somehow connecting and consider in a moment that as we are experiencing now is quite confusing and is separating people and um, where it's difficult to reorganize our life. And then I collaborated in a person, I collaborated with this organization in Kenya that is called BRIC. They developed this key or kit. And BRIC is a, is a really nice example of a company, African company with a, developing um, technology uh, created in Africa for Africa. So what they experience is that many um, tools were just developed in other parts of the world and applied uh, to the African context. And they were not um, 
really efficient or effective. So sometimes they were just getting broken and then it was difficult to, to repair or they were not designed for this specific contest. And so they, they, they decided to develop uh, Africa, uh, technology in Africa. And for example, they developed this kit. Uh, this is um, kind of sweet cases with, with a lot of tablets inside. And the good thing is that is, um, is working with solar power and it's possible uh, the, the contents of the, of the tablets are, um, are just uh, updated remotely um, from, from, for example, from Nairobi. So all the kids can have the same content that they can be um, um, changed over time. And so it's a, it's a good example if you want to, uh, to go more into this, this topic. Um, Brick is still working on education. They are working also in many different um, uh, sectors. And they are really strong now in connectivity. So they are providing internet connection for free in transport in, um, in Kenya and also in rural area. So they are working for, try to, uh, to fight against one of the barrier that is, uh, that is connectivity. And, um, and then there is ICT for health. Uh, this is also another really big sector uh, where we can have really positive uh, results in applying ICT. And it can be used for, uh, as it was for the teachers, can be used in, um, for the education of nurses, of doctors, so it is um, really uh, useful for having um, common ground between people that are working in health sector in urban area and people in rural area, for example. And then can be used in, uh, with a telemedicine. Telemedicine is just kind of remotely controlled. Uh, means, for example, that a doctor in, uh, in Europe that is expert in cardiology is just supporting a doctor in, um, in another country that is gonna have an issue that is maybe is particular um, it is really struggling with. So it's just the idea of connecting uh, professional from different countries and have give uh, access to, to high level of advices of knowledge to everybody. So this is the telemedicine in really <laughs> briefly. And there are many examples of the really good one is safe delivery app. Um, this is a um, service that's gonna be, uh, that was tested in, um, and applied, especially in Ethiopia, uh, where many pregnancy women were just delivering the baby in the countryside without the support of uh, a professional nurse, but just with, for example, the support of a traditional midwife. So this app um, is collecting a lot of videos and content um, but especially video with a lot of advices on what to do um, if you are facing some, if the, the traditional midwife is facing some uh, issue, um, can just create a kind of tutorial on how to uh, resolve um, the most common issue. And with this app, the, um, uh, the mortality rate of, of a child or babies um, slowly was, um, was um, uh, not increasing, I'm sorry, decreasing. And then we have the, the most famous service applied to the health sector. And it's just an information service through SMS. Um, so uh, the organization can decide, for example, to uh, to send many uh, SMS just informing about the different types of uh, vaccines. For example, if you have a baby and then after three months you have to go to the health center for get the first vaccines and that you have to go back after other two months and then you have a specific check. So it is really used 
in a rural area, especially for people that are living really far from us at the centers, in order to keep the conversation open and to remind people the, about specific se uh, check and the opportunity of following a specific medical path. So um, also it, it gave uh, by UNICEF, any other big organization. So you will find a lot of information about this on, uh, online. And then there is another sector that I decided to mention to you is uh, ICT for democracy and human rights. In this case, um, ICT can help to, for example, uh, and be used many times. One example, really common one is uh, Oshayidi platform. Um, Oshayidi platform was used the first time in, uh, in Kenya during the election in um, in 2008 and and it, it was really useful to uh, sorry is, is a platform that is connect is receiving information from many different uh, sources for example sms uh, social media um, using a specific hashtag so it was collecting all the information of what it was going on in the ground especially in, um, in this case in Nairobi, in Kibera slum. So many people get killed during the election and there was a lot of violence there and nobody really cared about poor people in slums. Uh, so this system and the, all the activists and the volunteers from Ushai, they were just reporting um, all what was going on uh, on the ground in order to get people um, for the first level was to get people aware of, of for example, the risky part of the slum. Uh, for example, now there is an attack in this specific area, so just don't move, don't go there, and, uh, because it's, it's dangerous. But also on a higher level, it was uh, really interesting for denouncing what it was going on on the ground. So uh, put information really visible to everybody. And is a technology development as well, and so I'm really happy about this. And it was applied for many different in many different sectors. For example, in in, um, in Egypt, uh, was applied for for this is famous example uh, example that is called Arasmap. That is applying um, Ushaidi uh, software uh, to um, gender based violence, so sexual harassment in the city and uh, so it is this case a map of all the different incidents and in order to um to um, create a advocacy on the government level to better protect some specific area and to be aware that this is a really big issue that they have to tackle and to it and I was personally involved in this project that is in Burundi. Um, so it's called Seruka Map. I was working with, um, uh, with a center on gender-based violence issue. And the idea was to map uh, that these incidents were not in some area, but um, that the government has to invest, so also the international cooperation to invest more resources in creating health center and support center in rural area because the cases were spreading all around the, the country. And also they were in a big number, much more than what they expected. So, so it's really a mm, good tool for advocacy, especially. And then the last sector, and I try to, to go fast to, for finishing, is IC, our ICTs for financial inclusion. And this, I decided to add this, this sector because now it's, uh, it's becoming really relevant and important because there are many people in the world, especially in rural area, that are kind of unbanked um, for many different reasons. The first one is, uh, are, for example, the high cost, uh, but also the level of knowledge that having a bank account is requiring is required to go to the bank, but also to understand all the different procedures related to how to manage a bank account, uh, all the bank services. But in some cases, it's also related to distances. 
people are living in rural areas really far from banks, so they cannot really go for and having a bank account. It's going to be so difficult to manage it. Um, so all the digital money and all the digital money apps and services are becoming, um, are spreading really super fast and are becoming really famous. The most famous example is um, M-Pesa. This also has been developed in Kenya, but there are so many services all around the world. In Italy, there is Satispay is working with the same approach. Uh, so now there are many communication companies, there are telecommunication companies, they are offering this kind of services, but also some um, independent startups who has developed similar service. Um, M-Pesa was developed by Safaricom and it's spread all around Kenya and Tanzania. 60% uh, of Kenyan's adult population use the service. And, and it's also really significant because if you consider that 31% of Kenya GDP is spent through mobile phones. So it's playing really <laughs> um, a, a big role. And it, it just kind of bank account that is stored in your phone. So allows people to share money just um, using uh, uh, their receiving money. Uh, you can use with uh, any kind of device, uh, as you can see in the picture. Um, you can use it for paying uh, for services, but also for being paid. And this is a big revolution because for farmers, there are, for example, of selling products in rural area, it's easier to get paid with uh, digital money. And then you can go just to this M-Pesa kiosk that there are everywhere and also to shops and to convert this money in, in real paper money or just, to, uh, or just to keep on paying with digital money. Okay, there are still some barriers so it's not, uh, ICDs are not this magical tool that are and the magical solution to all the issues of the world, of course. Um, there are many, and I mentioned before with talking about BRIC, is connectivity. Um, the, the, the internet uh, is not everywhere yet. Maybe it's gonna be in the future. It's improving a lot, the, the level of services Thanks to many initiatives, Brick is working on that. He's creating some um, uh, specific towers in the rural area that are using uh, different kind of signals. So they are allowing people to get to to be connecting to to the internet, but it's not everywhere yet. And then there is a barrier that is uh, not everybody is is um, is aware of the potential of ICT. Um, so besides using your phone just for, for calling people, for calls, you can use for many other things. And being aware of this potential is, uh, is the key of using it. So this is why sometimes I just uh, give this overall uh, presentation uh, just for showing people that there are many different way of using technology and the big one is, is still affordable, especially if you consider, if you talk about connectivity, uh, airtime are, is still quite expensive in many areas of the world. Uh, so this is a really big barrier yet. And then there is a um, cultural, social and linguistic challenge. Uh, is, this aspect, I think, is, is improving over time. Uh, it was super strong a mm, couple of years ago. Um, as the, the technology was all just Western-based, US, Europe, or East Asia, um, the language that the technology is it was, it was speaking is, was um, a little bit challenging for everybody because it was, for example, just English or Chinese, and so not, um, was not translating in, lo in local language everywhere. And it was not conceived for this environment. So sometimes the, um, this was a really, the cultural and linguistic barrier was really strong. And also 
if we think about uh, the social network, um, the voice, what I underlined, the voice and the context of much of the world were not represented. Um, so people were, were just discussing online, but the discussion was among people from a specific area of the world and many other areas were not involved and also represented, of course. And, and then there are still some differences. I mentioned many times about urban area. So, um, for example, one example that I underline is um, also to register a SIM card is not easy for every, in every part of the world if you, for example, you don't have a birth certificate or an identity card. So technology is not yet for everybody. Can do just read it. Um, the first one is when we decide to use or to integrate ICT in our project, to be aware that ICT has to be to respond to real needs. They have to be adapted to the cultural context, and we have to be sure that people know or easily will learn how to how to use the technology. Otherwise, it was not, technology is not helpful, it's just a barrier of And what else? Um, a suggestion is to try to work with local innovators and company. Um, I don't know with your congregation and organization, but many uh, international NGO are always uh, um, a little bit attracted by involving uh, in the companies see what is on the ground because there are many local innovators that are doing a really good job and a lot of local companies that need our support and they that are creating and expanding really good technology on the ground there is much better for for the contest um i was working uh, and will leave uh, this link to you with um Erin Yankarundi in rwanda for example he developed this solar kiosk that is allowing people to go, to be connected to the internet but also to um to recharge their phone everywhere also in in the countryside brick i mentioned so you can explore the page and the third aspect to be aware of is the negative side of technology um when we are creating something new, then we have the problem of uh, what is gonna happen after. So technology is also creating a lot of problems around the world uh, related to waste, technology waste, uh, waste, and also as another negative impact in the production, uh, in the, of course, unsustainable production. But anyway, it's, it's also an ethical aspect that we have to consider and deal with. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Viviana. Thank you. That the, I was also reading the, the comments and actually the lack of a good connection is really a challenge. For us, it was also hard to hear you sometimes because I think you have some problem of connection. So we lost some words during your presentation, but the PowerPoint helped us. So thank you. Uh, I saw that there are a lot of questions and comments in the English room, English room. So I suggest to take a few minutes of silence so we, uh, the, our translator can rest a little bit and you have the time to write some questions on the chat. And then we will have some minutes with Viviana for her to answer this question. Is that okay, Viviana? Yes, it is. I'm sorry for that. I think there is a um, kind of storm that is uh, arriving here. So maybe it's affecting also the level of my connection. I'm sorry for that. Don't worry. Okay, so you can read the English chat and then you can decide which question you want to answer. We cannot, you know, answer all. And perhaps you can give us some books or some other reference to, to learn more about that. And I will take care of the uh, Spanish chat. Okay, in two minutes. Okay.
workers, not just the communication side, but also the challenge they experience all day in their daily mission. Um, I just want to highlight the Spanish room so then you can answer all the questions together or just give us some uh, suggestions. M most of the comments in the Spanish room are uh, related with the lack of connection or poor connection, lack of electricity. Uh, so it was more this kind of questions and uh, just a second. Huh? Yeah, this is not only for, for instance, from Latin America, I guess, I don't know, but it's not just in the rural area, but also in the, in the, within the town, sometimes the connection is very poor. So thank you for giving in five minutes, seven minutes, some uh, answers. And then Eduardo, take note because you can give us some other reflection, like also according with this question. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I, I, I waited for the, the authorization to speak. Um, yes, this is a this is still a really big challenge: electricity and connectivity. Um, there are many initiatives around the world that are trying to to work. Uh, for sure, like solar power is um, is is going to be uh, developed around the world. I uh, so many. I uh, just went back from Kenya and there are many companies that are investing uh, also uh, some Kenyan reality that are working more in um, solar power. And for sure, this is a problem. And connectivity, for example, if you think about peace and justice, is not only a problem uh, during daily life. Uh, it's also big, we have a really big issue in emergency and in uh, kind of extraordinary time. So uh, it's still, uh, and I think about Africa, uh, connectivity is still be used by governments in specific moments. So they, it's quite normal they decide to just to shut down the network uh, in order not to allow people to share information about what is going on in, in some countries. So for sure, these are issue they are, they are still there and we have to, to work on it. And, but there are many startups especially that are trying to, to, to work and to face this, this problem. And so, and I found this posit really positive, not to expect from big brands coming from outside to, uh, to find a solution, but uh, every challenge is also an opportunity. So um, I think I'm quite confident that um, local innovators and local company will be in the next year able to improve the situation. And then I was uh, I pick up some question from the the English chat as well. They were really interesting. There are, there were many comments. Thank you to everybody. Uh, for example. Um, one, it was related to uh, the energy cost of, of ICT. Uh, so for example, servers need a lot of energy and this is causing pollution. And they are working on it as well. So I'm, uh, I will try to, to find the link and to share this with you. There is a, um, is a, is a news of this day about a server that is working with solar power and so there are some solution and some trial that are going on. Um, and also uh, there was another interesting question about uh, what happens to less privileged students that I can have no access to the ICT. I, I think that many countries are investing in um, ICT trainings and uh, university course for, for local uh, students. And I think this is really the key. So the technology has to be developed at a local level in order to, to be more inclusive and uh, also more spreading around because 
I, I can imagine if I'm an engineer um, or a developer for, uh, that is moving from a rural area to, uh, for example, the city center and the community of my country, I will be more uh, able in future to face the problem of my rural area to be back and to, uh, for example, provide deliver trainer trainings to to students in in that area, and so to give this knowledge back somehow, and also to develop some solution that can be really effective for this um, for this area. So I'm really I, I'm I'm super positive about the new generation, and and I think we have to invest a lot in creating this connection between um, between. Uh, youth and young people from different areas of the world uh, to be the one that can really deal with technology and developing new solutions, not just waiting for uh, top-down solutions coming from other countries. Thank you very much, Viviana. I want just to highlight the other challenge that came up from the uh, chat. One is about the e-wastes. The other one is about the Colton. So there is like a contradiction between the use of the ICT for development, so to overcome poverty, at the same time is a, a source of injustice to use Colton, not to use, yeah, to use Colton because the mining is really a big justice and peace issue. So I think this was highlighted from the, um, from the Spanish group. So we still have questions. We are not going to solve everything. And we, we are aware that everything has a uh, dark and uh, white side. So we are aware of that. I want just to show before greeting Viviana and thank her for her sharing. Uh, Therese, can you give me the, my computer? I want to show the website um, ONG20 dot org it's an italian in english it's a place you can also download and read more about this issue uh, most of the material is in italian if i'm not mistaken but i think there are uh, there's an english version of the website but the biggest uh, most of the, the greatest part of the of, of the material are in in italian there is an italian version and an english one if they just uh, go to the English version, they will find only English uh, kind of um, readings. Yes, but Vienna, I think it's not difficult to find the material in English on this issue, right? Yes, no. it's not. Okay, thank you, Viviana. Thank you very much for your sharing. You are most welcome if you want to stay here, but I know that you are busy, so feel free to leave. We won't blame you. Because now we have uh, Eduardo with new challenges. So uh, if we can, okay, here we are, Leo, Eduardo. He's an Italian engineer. He's a professor at the Pontifical University of the Dominicans here in Rome at the Angelicum. He will say more about him if he likes, but we are on board, Eduardo. Help us to continue the reflection on the ethics issues. Go. Ah, 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 ah. Eduardo, we can't hear you. You have to unmute your microphone. Teresa will help you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank uh, Patrizia for invitation. Uh, I always participate with pleasure to her events. In the past occasions, I find myself uh, uh, perfectly at ease. So if you get bored today, uh, you know who to blame. Uh, the subject is very interesting. And uh, I want to start uh, giving the definition of the term our problems um, because ICT refers to different level. The first one is uh, the low level, uh, the hard level, and uh, refers to cables, devices, um, uh, servers, computers that make up the network. The second level is the message, the services level, 
uh, who is being uh, rooted. Um, if we look at only one level, ignoring the others, uh, we make a mistake. Uh, the church in the past uh, made the mistake, for example, when uh, the church uh, evaluated the first book printed in the natural language as a product of low level, cultural level, and uh, did understand that the book in the natural language was creating uh, a new culture. So today, some of us despise the social network, uh, considering them as a useless chat. They uh, don't understand the, the social network. Um, they, um, they, they change, they imply. So, um, Veronica told about some problems I will address. Uh, I, I, I will give, I give no solution. I want just to point to some problem and uh, this problem uh, that uh, should be solved. Um, and solving the problem means a uh, choice and, and choosing. And any choice is an act, acting ethical. Uh, so what are the ethical choices that uh, posed, ethical choice posed by ICT? Uh, technology is non neutral. Um, the United Nations had defined the 17 sustainable development goals. Object 9 is very interesting. Object, object is 9 is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Eduardo, sì. I find very difficult to hear you. I think you have to be closer to the microphone. Oh, this one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here are you. Thank you. Okay. Objective nine, industry, innovation, infrastructure, uh, as important target, uh, building infrastructure for the industry, the trade, um, schooling. But what is the price for abolishing the digital divide? One of my uh, students uh, from... Uh, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo told me about the situation in uh, her city, Coma. Uh, they have uh, just a few hours of, uh, connection, of connection, and not even every day. I've called so over Wi Fi, so the young people uh, ask for a sister and the friar to, to use their connection. So uh, the young people. Uh, don't know, waste time on uh, surfing, uh, porn, uh, gossip, uh, movies, but they focus on the real reason they are on online. Um, <clears throat> so bring the internet means that young people, to young people have the opportunity to enter this site. The website, and maybe it's not a great pro uh, progress. Mm. Maybe uh, let's try to a uh, family man who needed to uh, uh, to uh, connect for uh, to access internet for um, health services because uh, um, <clears throat> bring the uh, bring the connectivity in an isolated village. Um, uh, is a problem. Uh, Veronica told about this. Uh, this man in the, in uh, an isolated village uh, need to, for example, to connect for um, for access to the health services. But he need a digital device, and the his cost is an accept unacceptable for compared to his income. Uh, in addition. Uh, they have hasn't the skill to use this device or these services. So, in few words, this man would be cut off from a social care. So, abolishing the digital divide means following a development path 
they respect people, culture, and ethical values. Uh, when we talk about ethics in communication, uh, we think that the journalists must be honest, or the team must be right, but it is not enough. Uh, when we, uh, for example, we all use Google and uh, no one take care about the policy of privacy, privacy policies. So Google collect our data when we use a digital device, uh, we leave uh, 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 trees on the digital and uh, Google call it out this data and uh, offer this data to everyone is interested to get. Um, but we can ask a guy Google to delete news that we, um, we think in correct or offensive. But Google had to, um, Google, uh, don't delete automatically this data. Uh, this request must be, um, this must be approved. Forgetting and remembering is a, a fundamental operation. Um, by remembering our mistake, can we, uh, uh, when can improve ourselves? But if we, if we don't forget some mistake, uh, the sense of guilt will become unbearable. In the same way, we must not forget a tragedy like a Shoah, whose painful memory must remain perpetual. We are deleting to the Google uh, the, to be uh, the moral guardians of our personal histories. But, uh, my Google is a company uh, that want to make money. But we, Google is not ethical, so we are delegating the, a company to say what is moral, what is ethics, and what is not. And it is very, very uh, dangerous. Um, I like uh, Amazon. Uh, when I search a book on Google, Amazon, uh, bombard me about the advertisement. Mm, in the, the same way, a company of neonatal product asked Google for um, for the name of the women who, according to their research, had started to become pregnant in order to send them a free kit. A father of give, uh, a father of the, or a give, received this kid, but um, the girl, the daughter, didn't um, uh, spoke about uh, the father. So the father, uh, uh, realizing in this way what uh, the daughter had hidden from him. This use of the same software, who seek what, but with two different purposes. This uh, uh, is a use, uh, because the algorithm, you know the difference. This teaches us that as long as a digital is not ethically designed, acting this uh, ethically is necessary, but not sufficient. Uh, another example is uh, robotic in the work. The, the robotic uh, uh, are designed for repetitive work and the men uh, are excluded. The men uh, are in uh, separate space in a control room. But AI, artificial intelligence, uh, allow the robot to work in the same space of the man. But I ask myself, uh, is, is it a man uh, working at the rhythm of the robots or is the robots uh, uh, that does? 
What is the one that get tired, get sick, uh, goes to the bathroom, uh, go to strike, make mistakes? What is that say to the other weight? So I think uh, uh, this is not covered. We, um, we, are, we all agree this is not fair, but no one, for example, cancel Amazon Prime and the piece of the world to become so fast the only machine can be it. When you chat with a customer services, I'm sure you are talking about a human person. Um, let's think about the cognitive bias, because uh, we're deleting, uh, deleting the, the, the digital to recognize criminal terrorists in the crowd, in the station, the railway station, the airport. Um, but uh, uh, an African-American researcher at MIT, Joy Bulamuini, came across a facial recognition software that didn't recognize her until her put on a white mask. This software didn't recognize almost any of the most important African-American women, even like Rose Park or Michelle Obama. The US court used uh, Compass a software uh, to impose uh, sentences. But uh, Compass recognized that algorithm penalized Hispanic and African-American ethnic groups because uh, it considered them more likely to, to repeat the offenses. Google apologized when it targeted the photo of uh, African-American women as gorilla. Facial recognized, recognized uh, used by the police uh, all over the world. So maybe Patrizia and I, we probably never be stop it, but how many of you could say the same? Is digital perpetrating racial divisions? Um, the use of big data contributed to make an error. Uh, considering uh, uh, digital uh, objective and immune to emotional choice. So big data, uh, we believe big da uh, data and uh, digital and the software are right because no, no, they have, met, have not feelings. Uh, big data are huge database containing the data generated by our digital habits. Working with data makes the creation of the statistical sample unnecessary because the size of the data tended to uh, the zero the error rate. <clears throat> um, the analysis team time uh, increases exponentially. exponentially. For this reason, the correlation is preferred, preferred over the rule. Correlation is a statistical relationship between two variables. As the first varies, the second varies with probable regularity. Correlation is not randomness, but neither is a true. The data get used to thinking that if this works, it's okay, without no knowing um, why and how that are plausible is sufficient without seeking the truth. There is no correlation, this is no rule for correlate to 
variables and uh, any correlation could be made. Eduardo, sí. we have some trouble to follow you. I, th I don't know if it's the microphone or something. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you because I realize that people cannot follow you. So I'm sorry for that. I will send the, to the participants your talk, the text that you send it to me. So we will do like a Google translation for the Spanish people, but we find very difficult to understand you. I, I don't know if it depends on the technical problem. So I, I see that it's not just my problem. I'm reading the comments and I see that it's difficult to follow you. So I'm sorry I have to interrupt you now. Okay. I'm sorry, but I will send you send it to me to the English people and to the Spanish people so they can make like a very fast translation. Okay, sorry for that. I, I see that also the translator was finding difficult to translate you. So I, I don't know, perhaps we have some technical problem. Uh, before we leave, I, I see that you are still writing. I want just to, to give you a comment, uh, Eduardo, about the, um, uh, que la tecnología es racista. Technology is racist and also is uh, a bit uh, machist. So, uh, is okay, we'll move to Spanish now. Vamos a enviar. So we're going to send the text for by um, email you're going to receive the presentation of viviana of uh, eduardo So Alba from the previous uh, meeting, before uh, sort of uh, concluding, I think that also Eduardo is familiar. Maybe we can ask uh, to see a moment my screen. This is the Pontifical Academy for Life and Renaissance, which is a game of words where I is artificial intelligence, so AI, artificial intelligence, is a way of finding a new way for this theme. So that had to do with the ethical dimension. So the academy had organized three days of reflection among various stakeholders, big companies, Google, Microsoft, as well as professors, important stakeholders called. What you see here, Rome called for AI ethics, uh, is precisely at the word says, is a call for Rome for uh, an ethics in artificial intelligence. You can easily download it. You can even see some of the uh, images and of the reflections. And uh, I would like to show you the main items which were basically uh, published. I'm gonna read that in English so that we can translate that. These are the six elements that they agreed upon about uh, the ethics of the artificial intelligence. It means an AI at the service of the humanity. First, transparency. Artificial intelligence systems must be explainable. Second, inclusion. The needs of all human beings must be taken into consideration so that everyone can benefit and all individuals can be offered the best possible conditions to express themselves and develop. Third, responsibility. 
those who design and deploy the use of AI must proceed with responsibility and transparency. Four, impartiality. Do not create or act according to bias, thus safeguarding fairness and human dignity. Fifth, reli reliability. AI systems may, must be able to work reliably. Six, security and privacy. AI systems must work securely and respect the privacy of users. Down below you have the website. This, dom this document is a very basic document, but it's the first time that something like that has been done by an initiative of the Vatican. It was very important to, meet, to let multi-stakeholders meet around the same table to talk about a common issue. This is not that an issue just by the church, it's by the uh, companies, scientists, professors, users, normal people, so this was, in my opinion, this was a very important step. Of course, I will send you this, mo this document too. I'm sorry, it's just in English. I don't know if they are going to, to have a translation. Okay, we move towards the end of this, this meeting. Don't, wor don't worry if you lose some information, I will send it to you. I'm trying to see if there are special requests. Ah, okay, so let's go back to the website where you can see it here, academylife. Here we go. But I will send it to you, don't worry. Español? Bueno, vamos a. So we're going to now come to a close. I do understand that we have opened up new uh, windows, uh, new questions, and also new challenges. I believe that the challenge of digital culture, which is the culture where we live, the famous infosphere, we have to learn to live the complexity and also the uh, paradox. Uh, we probably, it happens that two things are true. But, and of course, we as Catholics sometimes uh, are faced uh, and confronted with uh, difficulties and we sh can reflect though. So the theme for the next meeting, which is the fourth, is the so-called fundraising. So how can we, through the campaign, how can we basically raise funds for our mission? And this is not done outside the digital world. And, and this is why we speak about digital fundraising. So we're going to have an expert working in Aleteia. He's a journalist, a Spanish journalist. I think he's gonna speak in Spanish, but uh, I think I'm, give you additional information and so as you have noticed at each meeting we normally have two speakers i didn't think about that um, i will see if a theme has remained So without reflecting further, if you maybe send it to us in maybe a couple of days, I can try to find someone who 
can help us to think and reflect. Okay? I want to leave you just a few minutes, hoping that maybe in uh, see a moment in the chat. There is an interesting question proposal from the Spanish group. Uh, how can culture help uh, cinema, music? These are all tools and new languages that we can certainly um, uh, maybe exploit to provide a different narrative, which is also in the field of communication. Thank you very much for this uh, interesting proposal. You can also think maybe and take, take your time and uh, you can discern and you can send me a little uh, message and I will see if I can find someone who can help us as a second uh, speaker for this meeting. Wonderful. I think I have, I have taken down uh, a lot of, of the questions that we have received uh, not to avoid, you know, let's maybe not avoid additional questions. So, hoping that you have a very fruitful week. Let's uh, simply continue to pray a lot for all those who are suffering a lot for the uh, virus. It's not only a question to remain, uh, the fact of remaining uh, alone, but mainly what uh, is happening in the, with the more vulnerable. Let's continue praying. Praying together. Because truly, it's something which is affecting us, all of us. So. Thank you very much, brother uh, and sister Therese. Sorry for the technical um, issues and also the translator myself. <sighs> we are a small link between cultures. Thanks to all of you. Have a nice day and have a nice week. And we will uh, meet again next week uh, on Thursday.